Hello, Omar. My name's Ben. Do you mind if I examine your back? No. Can I ask you to stand up, please, and face me? With the patient standing and adequately exposed, inspect the posture from in front, the side, and from behind. Note any deformity, for example, rib hump or abnormal curvature. Look for soft tissue abnormalities, like a hairy patch or lipoma, that might overlie a congenital abnormality. I'm now going to feel down your back. Let Palpate the midline spinous processes. Note the overall alignment and any focal tenderness. Increased prominence of one or more posterior spinal processes can be due to wedge-shaped collapse of the vertebral body anteriorly. The L45 interspinous space is palpable Again, at the level of the iliac the crests. Feel for tenderness in the paraspinal muscles. You may also notice areas of increased tone. Now I'm going to tap over the bottom of your back. Let me know if it's sore. After warning the patient, lightly percuss the spine with your closed fist and note any tenderness. Just sit down on the couch for me. And cross your arms. And now I'd like you to look towards me. With the patient rotate sitting like this, towards me. the pelvis cannot rotate. We're looking for rotation between the shoulders and the pelvis. Almost all of this occurs in the thoracic spine. Next we test flexion, most of which happens in the lumbar spine. I'd like you to keep your legs straight and bend over to touch your toes. Record how far down the legs the patient can reach. And back up and take a step forward. Now lean back as far as you can. Extension, again mostly a lumbar movement. Normal is 10 to 20 degrees beyond vertical. And now I'd like you to go down to the side like that as far as you can. This tests lateral flexion. Ask the patient to reach down each side, touching the outside of the leg as far down as possible, keeping the leg straight. And turn round. When examining forward flexion of the spine, it is difficult to separate this from hip flexion. In Schober's test, we isolate the component in the lumbar spine. Mark the skin in the midline at the level of the dimples of Venus. Using a tape measure, draw two more marks, one 10 centimeters above and one 5 centimeters below the initial mark. We refer to the upper mark as B and the lowest mark as C. Place the end of the tape measure on the uppermost mark, B, and ask the patient to bend forward and touch their toes. Now keeping your legs straight, bend over. The distance from B to C should increase from 15 centimeters to more than 20 centimeters. Now we move on to the straight leg raise to test for tension in the L4, L5 and S1 nerve roots. With the patient lying supine, lift the foot to flex the hip passively, keeping the knee straight. Tell me if you get any pain at any stage. Determine if there is a limit caused by pain in the thigh or leg. It is normal to reach 80 or 90 degrees from the couch. If a limit is reached, support the limb just below the limit. I'm just going to bring your foot up. Let me know if that causes any discomfort. Pain due to nerve root tension should be reproduced by dorsiflexing the foot. For the tibial nerve stretch test, we flex the hip and knee. I'm now going to bring the leg up again. Then we gently extend the knee so that the tibial nerve bowstrings across the popliteal fossa. Let me know if it's painful. Press over the hamstring tendons at either side. Is that sore? No. And then over the nerve in the no. middle of the fossa. Is that sore? No. The test is positive if pain occurs when the nerve is pressed, but not the hamstring now tendons. Now you roll over onto your front. Lie the patient prone for the femoral nerve stretch test. I'm just going to bring this leg up. Flex the knee and then extend the hip. This stretches the femoral nerve. Leg. Let me know if there's any pain. A positive test 
will cause pain in the back or front of the thigh. We don't demonstrate the flip test, which can be useful to differentiate between pain of nerve root tension and functional overlay. There are details in the textbook. Thank you very much.